Welcome to today's lesson. What are simple machines? Simple machines are devices that make work easier with a single motion and consist of a few or no moving parts. What is work? Here is the definition of work. Work equals force times the distance moved. The further you move an object or a load, the more work you do. Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. Archimedes. Go the following simple machines video. How do simple machines make work easier? Can you think of some ways you may have used them? They do make the work easier in three main ways. By lessening the force exerted. 2. By changing the distance over which a force is exerted. Or. 3. By changing the direction of the force exerted. Classic examples of simple machines are the screw, the wheel and axle, the wedge, the inclined plane, the pulley and the lever. Why use an inclined plane? How steep should it be? Can you think of answers to these questions? Let's look at some levers. Levers have been used since ancient times. A lever is a straight rod or board that pivots on a point known as a fulcrum. Pushing down on one end of a lever results in the upward motion of the opposite end of the lever. The lever in the diagram above works because the large weight of the block is balanced by the weight of the wooden crate which has been filled with stones. This means that the block can be moved or lifted by one person pulling on the rope. The Egyptians may have used people rather than the stones when building the pyramids. Once the block reached the next level it would be swung into position using the lever. There are three classes of levers. What are class 1 levers? A class 1 lever has the load and the effort on opposite sides of the fulcrum, like a seesaw. Examples of a class 1 lever are a pair of pliers and a crowbar. Can you label the fulcrum, load and effort on the picture? It will take a force of 1 0, 0, 0, 0 and to lift the load in the picture below. But, using a lever, a rod with the fulcrum placed closer to the load than the point of effort, it only requires one third of that force. Even less effort is required if the fulcrum is placed very close to the load. Skateboard is a simple class 1 lever. Have a look at the following video. The fulcrum is positioned between the effort and the load. If the effort is usually smaller than the load and the effort is further from the fulcrum than the load, then the lever can be considered as a force magnifier or multiplier. What are class 2 levers? A class 2 lever has the load and the effort on the same side of the fulcrum. The load is in the middle. The load nearer the fulcrum. Examples of a class 2 lever are a pair of nutcrackers or a wheelbarrow. In the diagram, the wheel or fulcrum on the wheelbarrow is helping to share the weight of the load. This means that it takes less effort to move a load in a wheelbarrow than to carry it. A gate is also class 2 machine. Can you label the effort, load and fulcrum? For class 2 levers, the load lies between the effort and the fulcrum. The effort is smaller than the load. The effort is further from the fulcrum than the load. The lever can be considered as a force magnifier or multiplier. Let's talk about class 3 levers. A class 3 lever does not have the mechanical advantage of class 1 levers and class 2 levers, so examples are less common. The effort is in between the load and the fulcrum, but the effort is closer to the fulcrum than the load, so more force is put into the effort than is applied to the load. These levers are good for grabbing something small, fiddly or dirty, or picking up something that could be squashed or broken if too much pressure is applied. The common example of class 3 levers is a pair of barbecue tongs or a pair of tweezers. For class 3 levers, the effort lies between the load and the fulcrum. The effort is greater than the load. The load is further from the fulcrum than the effort. The lever can be considered as a distance magnifier or multiplier. Class 3 levers have also been called velocity multipliers. 
Summary for the classification of levers. A fulcrum is a pivot point. The effort is the force or source of energy applied and the load is the mass that needs to be moved. In a class 1 lever, the fulcrum lies between the effort and the load. In a class 2 lever the load lies between the effort and the fulcrum. In a class 3 lever the effort lies between the load and the fulcrum. Class 1 and class 2 levers are force multiplies if the effort is further from the fulcrum than the load. That is, the longer the handle, the less force is required in the effort. Class 3 levers are distance multiplies as more effort is always needed to shift a smaller load but the load is shifted by a large distance. Levers in the human bee. Where would we find levers in the human body? The fulcrum is the skeletal joint about which the movement occurs. The load is the weight to be moved and it includes the weight of the limb plus the object to be moved. The effort is the source of energy and this is dependent on the muscle and position where the muscle is attached to the bone. Can flex your biceps and find where they attach on your forearm? Class 3 is the most common class of lever to be found in the human body, but class 1 and class 2 levels are also present. Let's look at some examples of simple levers in strength training. Class 1 levers. Fulcrum is in the middle. The elbow is the fulcrum. The ball or dumbbell is the load. The effort is provided by the triceps muscle. Throwing the ball over the arm. Seated dumbbell triceps extension. Notice the effort required is greater than the load since the ball or dumbbell is located further away from the elbow than the triceps muscle attachment point. However, the fulcrum is in the middle. This makes it a class 1 lever even though it is not a force multiplier. Attachment to the triceps muscle. Class 2 levers. Load is in the middle. Stand up without your shoes and feel the weight on your foot. Now come up to your toes and feel the calf muscle contract and shift weight shift to the ball joint under your foot. This joint between the metatarsals and phalanges is the fulcrum. The tense muscle in your calf is attached to the back of the foot via the Achilles heel. This force provided by the muscle is the effort. Your body weight comes down through the center of your ankle. The body weight is a load. The effort is smaller than the load and they are next to each other. This makes the lever a force multiplier. Class 3 levers. Effort is in the middle. The elbow acts as the fulcrum. The dumbbell is the load. The effort is the force provided by the biceps muscle. Notice the effort required is bigger than the load but the load travel quite a distance. Is this joint designed to maximize distance or force? In nature why is it more important to multiply the distance rather than the force? How would you redesign this lever to be a force multiplier? How would you rearrange the load and the effort? A leg extension to kick a ball is also a class 3 lever. The effort is in the middle.